What's up, everyone? It's your good friend, Eric. It's the Leading Edge Podcast, episode number 59. Thank you so much for engaging. I so appreciate it. This one is called Managing Yourself. And before we dive in, I just want to give an extra thank you for helping me and helping us achieve a pretty cool milestone. We just blew right by 7,000 downloads. What? Can you believe it? I'm really, really jazzed, really pumped about that. I love hitting these little milestones. It looks like this month of February 2021 will be the biggest download month ever in the history of this podcast. So that is pretty darn cool. I want to give um, give a shout out and, and say my heart goes out to those of you in Texas, those of you in the South who are really impacted by this severe weather that we're having right now. I hope that you're okay. I hope that you're that you're healthy and, and safe and recovering and doing all right. It is intense uh, what's happening down there. So my heart goes out to you. I want you all to know that you are in my thoughts uh, for sure. Speaking of intense, and this is why we're making this podcast called Managing Yourself. Speaking of intense, we are all dealing with, no matter where you are uh, listening to this, we're all dealing with a pretty intense market right now. So here we are in February 2021. The market is intense in that it's got some pretty low inventory, which is causing some uh, other intense results. So we got intensely low inventory and causing uh, intense circumstances and results. I always coach people to never describe the market as being crazy. I will tell you that I am more tempted than ever to describe the market as crazy, but I'm still not going to do it. All right, I'm not gonna uh, use the word crazy uh, when I'm describing the market. What I would say is this market is certainly, number one, it's for professionals only, right? This is a market for pros. So bravo to you for being a real estate pro and engaging with this podcast. Um, it is uh, intense. We're seeing things that we've never seen before and we are having to really dial up our game. And what the other thing I would tell you, this is a market of opportunity in that it's an opportunity to stand up and shine and really deliver amazing service and value to your clients. Always when things get tough, it's a chance for the best of the best to be even better. So uh, what I notice in Colorado, for instance, uh, the inventory is at record lows, you know, lowest ever. Uh, we are 80% below where the normal is, and I know that that is what we're seeing all over the place. So uh, Colorado is not alone. That's that's the deal. That's what we're experiencing. So this topic of managing ourselves, you know what? It's always important. I think we would all agree with that. It's always important to be really good at managing ourselves and have good techniques and strategies for managing ourselves. And now today, when we think about working with our clients in this kind of market, it's never, ever been more important because you know what we need to be at our very best for them given what's happening in the market given that many aspects of it are tough and challenging we have to be at our very best for our clients so we have to be really really good at managing ourselves right more than ever our clients need us uh, on our a game right uh, at a 10 out of 10 really showing up for them to help them get the result that they want so before we talk about how to manage ourselves. I'm going to give you some thoughts. I'll give you some strategies about how we manage ourselves. Why don't we talk about who and what can actually be managed in this whole thing, <laughs> right? So let's look at the landscape. Let's look at what I call the playing field. And let's be clear on, as we look at that playing field, who and what can actually be managed in the first place. So again, I like to use this metaphor of a playing field. I think this can, can help us get our arms around, get our head around what's, what's happening as we look at all the different pieces and the different players specifically. So let's say it's even a soccer field, right? Let's get specific. Let's say it's a soccer field and let's say that you're looking down on this soccer field, like even like a, like a drone shot. So imagine like from exactly over midfield, you're looking down on this uh, landscape, you're looking down on the field of play, it's a soccer field. And so let's consider all that we're seeing down there. So we're seeing players, uh, we're seeing coaches, and we're also seeing the field. And let's consider what and, and who can actually be managed in the first place. And why don't we start with the field itself? Can you manage the field, <laughs> all right? So if you are 
the owner, the general manager, the coach, a player on the soccer team, is it going to do you any good to sit there and try to be managing the field? Uh, like, and that, that's a pretty strange concept, right? And you're, and you're like, what, what are you talking about? Well, no, you can't, you can't manage like grass and dirt and <laughs> astroturf, whatever it is. You can't manage that. Exactly. Right. You cannot manage the field. And yet we try to, and I see so often people, realtors are wishing, hoping, waiting for more inventory, right? They're, they're just craving for things to be different. Uh, they're just wishing, wishing more than anything. Oh my gosh, I just wish things were different. This is so hard. Can't we go back to how it was before? I need things to change, right? So they are waiting around for things to change so that things uh, would be easier. That is no different than trying to manage the field. Guess what? The field is the field. Uh, the field is going to do what it wants to do, all right? We cannot at all uh, control, manage uh, what's happening in the market. That, my friends, is a recipe for insanity, all right? If, if we're trying to manage the field itself and, and try to get the field itself to change or we're waiting around for the field to become what we would like it to become so that our life can be much easier and so our client's life can be easier, that ain't gonna work out, all right? So also related to that, worrying about the market and also doubting the market. And, and why don't we spend just a couple minutes on that? What, I see this going on in some realtors' mindsets right now. They are worrying about the market and they're really doubting the market. Well, guess what? The market is going to do uh, what it's going to do. And so worrying about something that is totally out of your control will not do you any good. And also related to that, doubting uh, the health of the market and what the, how the market might perform over the long term does you no good, does your also your clients no good. And I see this going on a lot. So because the inventory is so low, prices are jumping up and I see realtors starting to get worried and they're, and they're doubting uh, what may happen with prices in the market. And so let me tell you, let me just say this. If your belief in real estate as an amazing wealth building tool is not like at a 10 out of 10, that is gonna be a problem, all right? That's gonna be a problem for you. It's gonna be a problem for your clients because that is the profession that, that you have chosen. That is uh, the, the um, job, that, that is, uh, that's the path that you're on, right? It is to help people uh, when it comes to one of the most important, most significant transactions that they're ever gonna do. It's called real estate. And, it, and if your belief in, in real estate itself is shaken, Oh my gosh, that that's such a disservice, obviously to you and and uh, and also to your clients. Because check it out, real estate has proven to be something that performs over the long term. Like if, if you look at any market, <laughs> anywhere, over the long term, real estate performs. And and real estate, the, the amazing thing about real estate is that it combines two of the most powerful economic forces that exist, which are leverage and compound interest, all right? So each of those on their own are amazing, uh, right? We've heard that Albert Einstein quote about compound interest and and uh, what does he say? It's it's one of the wonders of the world, as he called the eighth wonder of the world is, is compound interest. Uh, and you combine that with, with leverage. So you have both of those things going on uh, in real estate. So real estate is amazing. And so if you are really wrapped up in what the market may do in the short term, the first thing I would say is that you need to step back, you need to pull back, we need to, we need to think and look long term, all right? We need to look at what real estate has done in any market over the long term. We need to consider how long our clients are gonna be owning uh, this home, all right? And unless you're working with people that are into like buying and flipping, and there's still opportunity to do that too, like find some good buys and fix them up and flip them in a really hot market, there's a chance for that too. But you know what? Your clients are going to be in their home for, for a long time, right? And so if you are yourself really fretting over uh, what, what prices are, are going to do, 
I think it's important for you to step back again. And we really need to study the history, like know the history of your market and how it's done over the long term. And the other thing I would question if you're really wrapped up in that is like, to what extent are you selling the investment aspect of real estate? Like, are, are you pitching someone buying their primary residence as, as an investment? Well, no, you're, you're, pitch, you're pitching that. You're not even pitching. You're, you're talking about the dream of them owning this, this amazing property and what it's going to mean for them. And if they have a family, what it's going to mean for their family and, and all, the, all the amazing things that are going to happen there. And then meanwhile, we know that over the long term, it's going to be an amazing way uh, to build wealth. Like if you look at the most wealthy people, really, if you look at just about the entire population, if you look at how people have wealth, well, guess what? It's through their real estate. And so we know about the power of real estate. We know how important it is for people to own. We know what's going to happen uh, when they do own real estate, because guess what? They're there paying down the principal balance of their home. And that's where the equity is built. That's how the equity is built. They get to own this property for a constant payment for as long as they want. And they're building equity because the principal is getting paid down. And then the appreciation, that's just the icing on the cake. All right. So if we are so wrapped up in what's going to be, what's going to happen with prices over the next six months, 12 months, like we're focused on the wrong thing, right? We need to focus on what this, what this purchase, what this property, what this home is going to mean for our clients. We got to step back. We have to pull back. We have to ourselves believe in the power of real estate and we have to stop trying to manage it. All right. So the first place to manage ourselves, I guess, is our belief in the market, our belief in real estate itself. So I think it's as simple as just understanding What is the long-term performance of your market? And that's what this is about. Real estate is a long game. People always play the long game uh, in real estate. All right, that was all about the field. (laughs) Again, I noticed a whole lot of people getting wrapped up and trying to manage the field itself. That ain't gonna work. That's a recipe for insanity. The other place I see a lot of energy being poured into, uh, the other people that we are trying to manage Uh, that will also drive us insane are the other players, all right? So if we're out there on the field, if we're playing ourselves, if we're trying to manage the other players, uh, if we're we're the coach and we're trying to manage the other team, uh, if we're trying to ever manage someone else's behavior, trying to control someone else's behavior, well, guess what? That's not going to work because turns out they have control (laughs) over their own behavior. Turns out we have no control over their behavior. So when, when we are so wrapped up in the actions and the behavior of our clients, uh, so our buyers of the of the seller, whether it's our seller or someone else's seller, uh, the, the other broker, the lender, uh, the title escrow company, right? All, all the different players, like when we're so wrapped up in that, that is a waste of energy. What I notice, what I see a whole lot of is us as realtors getting hooked by the behavior of other people. And when I say hooked, what I mean is emotionally hooked, like getting so wrapped up, getting so caught in a swirl and in a negative spiral based on other people's behavior. So here's what I'm hearing a lot of, oh my gosh, can you even believe what people are doing right now? Can you even believe the behavior of realtors in general, of, of this other realtor? Can you believe that the lender did this or that? Can you believe that my client said this or that. And, and you know, it's one thing to be disappointed and to have standards and to have expectations, but it's a whole nother thing just to be completely emotionally hooked and letting that take you off your game. So now guess what? You're not at your best for your client. That is not a good thing. That is not going to work. All right, so what can we manage then as we look at this whole landscape, as we look down at the playing field, from our drone shot, well, there's only one thing, only one person we can manage. It is ourself, all right? And it turns out that we can, when we look at managing ourselves, we can ultimately manage several things related to ourselves. So we're gonna go through these, all right? So the, the first one you can manage is you can, ima- you can manage your emotions, all right? You can manage your emotions through this process. Let me ask you this. If you're working with a buyer, 
and they get beat out on an offer. Someone else offers more, someone else has a better offer and your clients are devastated. Is it effective for you also to be devastated? Is it helpful to them for you to be devastated? No, not at all. It's not helpful. So I see this a lot. I see realtors who are just devastated because their clients are devastated. So I'd say to them, you know, how's it going? Oh my gosh, awful. I'm terrible. My clients have been beat out so many times. They're devastated. I'm just devastated for them. I am crushed. Um, I'm just really, really bummed out. Well, that is not how our clients need us. Now, here's the thing. Empathy is powerful. Empathy is important. So it's the difference between appreciating what our clients are feeling and knowing what it's like to feel that and letting that be a motivator for us because certainly we don't want our clients going through that. So allowing that to spur us on into action, empathy is beautiful, but we don't go there ourselves, right? We don't wallow in it. We don't get completely hooked by it. There is a difference, there is a, there's a line that exists. So we go up to the line where we're appreciating uh, where they're at. We can see the world through their eyes. And we're saying to ourselves, all right, here's how I'm thinking about this. I see my clients going through this. I don't want this for them. I wanna help them out. So the best thing I can do is not go there myself. The best thing I can do is manage my own emotions and be in my A game. And we are gonna get back out there. We're gonna get back into the arena and onto the playing field and I'm gonna help them out. I'm not gonna let myself be devastated myself because that does no one any good, all right? So we must be really cognizant of keeping our emotions in check, being empathetic, but not getting fully, fully hooked by their own emotions and what's going on. And that's totally fine. Like they don't they don't need us to be devastated ourselves. It, it won't be insulting if we're not devastated ourselves. Actually, I think the opposite, I, I think, Clients may question, they may wonder, they may see that it's not helpful if you yourself are being devastated. So appreciate it, understand it, see the world through their eyes and keep your own emotion in check. Number, number two thing that we can, can control, that we can manage, guess what? We can manage the process, all right? So we all have this amazing, this incredible, this powerful, this proven process that we have to help buyers out. And we just follow the process, right? We just go step by step by step. We know what the process is, we know what what needs to happen next, and we know what needs to happen first. And what we know is we need to go slow to go fast, all right? It's one of my very favorite sayings, we go slow to go fast. And in today's market, knowing that we have to go extremely fast at the end, right? When it's time to make the offer and when it's time to go after the, the right property that comes on the market, knowing that we have to go extremely fast then, we must go extremely slow at the beginning. So that's something we, that we can manage. We can manage not only the process, but also the pace of the process. And we gotta slow it down, guys, up front. We must slow it down. And so what that looks like is asking a lot of really good, really thoughtful questions uh, up front. What that means is really taking the time to walk them through the realities of the market so they get it, so they're not surprised, so they don't have to learn the hard way. So they don't have to get kicked around and beat up in the market for them to finally understand. You just slow it down at the beginning, all right? There's plenty of time at the beginning. There's plenty of properties that that will come on the market. It's gonna uh, end up saving you and saving them all kinds of not only time, but, but brain damage and heartache when you can just slow it down. So that's what's going through your mind. When you meet with clients, especially for the first time, you're connecting with buyers, you're just gonna slow it down, right? Just wanna go really slow. I'm gonna ask you the questions I always ask. I'm gonna walk you through what's happening in the market. We're gonna play out some scenarios. Then we're gonna go, right? Then, then we're gonna pounce. We're gonna get you fully, fully loan approved. We're gonna get all the boxes checked. You're gonna to totally understand all the documents. Nothing's gonna be a surprise. We're gonna cover all the bases, go super slow, and then boom, then they're ready, right? Then they're ready to go really, really fast. So we control the process and we control the pace of the process. The other thing that we can can control related to managing ourselves, we can manage expectations. All right, so we can't manage the other person's behavior, but we can manage their expectations. One of the greatest lessons I've ever learned, and I've shared this in a podcast earlier, was from one of my first sales managers when I was selling new homes. He said to me, hey, Eric, 
guess what? You're not a salesperson. You are an expectations manager. All right. So I definitely want you thinking, thinking in that way right now, especially when you're working with buyers. You're not in sales. You are in expectation management. That's what you're doing. And so what you're doing a lot of now is you're playing scenarios. And so you're doing a whole lot of if then, whole lots of if then. All right. If we make an offer that is that looks like this, then these are the things that may happen. And if these things happen, then this is how I suggest we respond. Or these are these are going to be uh, your options. If you if you don't act, then these are the things uh, that may happen. If uh, the other person says this, then these are going to be our choices, right? So it's a whole lot of if then, whole lot of playing playing out of scenarios. It's also a fair amount of here's the deal kind of conversations <laughs> in this market. So our client, it's so important for our clients to get it, for our clients to understand, for them not to um, uh, not to uh, miss out on the point. Um, this is no time for things to be vague or um, or not certain or no time to dance around things. It's time to like get to the point and make things clear. And how that sounds is you start with them saying, look, here's the deal, or here's the thing. Here's the thing about this market. Here's the deal about this offer you're about to make. Here's the thing about what I'm hearing back from the other uh, broker, right? All those things. Here's the thing. Here's the deal. We got to lay it out, right? We have to make it super clear, no dancing around. And the other thing that we do in terms of managing, ex managing expectations is we say a whole lot of, are you going to be okay with that? All right, so it's one of my very favorite questions. Are you gonna be okay with that? So if, if we do this and they respond this way, um, are you gonna be okay with that? If you make this offer that, it, it, that is as high as you're talking about, what I, what I want for you, it's really important. I want you to be okay with that. So you're, are you gonna be able to sleep at night? Are you gonna be good with that for, for many months to come? Right? Are you going to be good with making that offer? Also, are you going to be okay if someone, if you make this offer that we're talking about and someone else beats you out by a couple thousand dollars, are you going to be okay with that? So it's not manipulation. It's not you know trying to cajole them or trick them or anything like that. It's just showing them the realities, giving them the realities. So oftentimes when people are making decisions and during an emotionally charged state, they're not fully thinking through what may happen as a consequence of that what's gonna happen on the other side as a, po as a result of making a certain decision. So it's up to you to lay that out for them to say, okay, so if you did that are you, are, and this certain thing happens as a result, are you gonna be okay with that? And you're not being snarky about it or, or anything like that or, or mean or, or uh, manipulative, you're just laying it out and, you, and you're getting them to see the result of their actions that they may take, all right? So again, guys, there are certain things that we can control and manage. There are certain things that we cannot. So we're not going to waste our time trying to manage the field, wishing, hoping, waiting, worrying, doubting. None of those things uh, do any good. We're not going to try to manage the behavior of other people. Uh, we're certainly not going to get emotionally hooked by them. We can be disappointed. We can set expectations. We can tell them that certain behavior doesn't work for us, but we're not going to get hooked by it. We are going to manage our own emotions, all right? And so we're gonna appreciate where our buyers are at, but we're not gonna go there with them, right? We're not gonna get sucked in. We're not gonna wallow in it with them. We're gonna manage the process itself and also manage the pace of the process. And we're also gonna manage expectations. Those are all things I think that will help you in today's market, no matter when you're listening. To this. So again, thank you so much, guys, for engaging with this podcast. It means the world to me. If you enjoy things like this, if you want to check out more coaching, more mindset management, more ways to keep yourself on point at the top of your game, what you got to do now is check out my mindset masterclass. It's called Alpha State. My goodness, the people involved in that are getting massive results. Go to alphastateclass.com to check it out, to get signed up. We'll get you going uh, right away. You can be a part of that mastermind, get to be a part of that community, a group of people who together are working toward mastering their mindset. It's alphastateclass.com. Guys, thank you so much for engaging with this podcast. It means the world to me. Can't wait to see you on the next one. In the meantime, enjoy life on the leading edge.